So Power Tool was a, um, just a, a bonus like, uh, that I, I, just, I, I enjoyed so much. You know, I had written my own scripts in PowerShell. Uh, I wrote my, H my own HTTP clients and, uh, and my own scripts for that. But um, when the UCS group came out with Power Tool, I thought, well, this is, this is just phenomenal. And, um, and, you know, Microsoft eventually got it right with PowerShell. So um, I, let me just take a quick poll of the room. Who's used Power Tool? All right. Who went to the four-hour session on Sunday? All right, so hopefully, because there's some duplication in, in content here, but I really want to—I want to get you some uh, good info on Power Tool. Um, so, years ago, back in the early '80s, I had a book called uh, "Tips and Tricks of the Unix Masters," and that book was the Bible for me as a recent, recent college grad working at uh, a printing company where we had a Unix system, and then further on, I went to an advertising company where we used Unix, and I was the Unix guru, I became that, that master. But it was all because of the book. So I want to pass along some tips and tricks. They're not really secrets, they're out there, but it may be something that you haven't really utilized um, in your day to day because you've seen other methodologies to use. So I want to talk about um, some ex the extensive built-in metadata that uh, is in UCS Power Tool. Um, the option data that's built into there. So sometimes you do a lot of shifting and searching around for things that uh, are already there. They're at your fingertips. You just don't know that they're there. So ho if it's a review for some of you, great. If it's new for other people, fantastic. So what resource are, resources are available? Who's used the UCS emulator? Uh, so everybody. So you know, I mean, we've done a really good job with UCS emulator giving you the ability to bring in hardware and chassis types and, and, uh, and fabric interconnects uh, in an emulated mode without having to actually have that hardware and having code that you write against the emulators work, I, I want to say, 99.9% .9 exactly the same against a, um, a, a, a real UCS. So uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the emulator to the extent of its capabilities. Um, and then there's the communities on, on uh, uh, Cisco.com that, uh, you know, there's the forums are in there. I used to answer a lot of forum questions, but not so much anymore because I am in a, a different product, but I felt so strongly about this opportunity to talk about Power Tool that I, um, I jumped into it. So you understand the XML API controls all the components in UCS Manager, or that UCS Manager uh, controls. But the reality is, and I wrote a blog about this, I think back in like 2012 or 2013, it was, I would go to a customer's site and they would say, oh, can I do that via the API? And I would tell them, if you can do it in the graphical interface, you can do it in the API. There's no, this wasn't an, an API that was built after the interface, this was an API that the interface was built on top of, right? So everything you see in the, in the graphical interface is available in the API. So you know how that stuff works if you use the API. Um, you have this capability uh, to use uh, consume the API directly, or con it gets consumed through the CLI. So, all, and you may not realize this, that all the CLI commands get turned into API commands on the, or XML API commands on the back end. There's really no difference between something that gets executed from the CLI or that gets executed from the, um, from the graphical interface. The other great thing about the API is I would run an HTTP mode and just pop up Wireshark, and I would do stuff and I would say, oh, that's the code that I need. I would just grab the XML that was going back and forth and say, well, this is my development job here is very easy because I, I can see exactly what objects are being manipulated. And I would try to explain to people, like, you just need to know the class ID or the, the attributes. And then, well, how do I get that information? You know, and it, it's, um, it was sort of a, a, a mysterious art back then. But then with Power Tool, they, they took that API or that XML schema and, and we're able to run it through a generation mechanism. So now that we have a uh, PowerShell library or Power Tool library that has something on the order of 2,000 commandlets in it, where 1,990, you know, or 1,970 of them are generated from the XML schema, and the other ones are actually hand coded. Like Connect UCS is hand coded, and UCS backup transaction ones are, are, are hand coded. But um, 
Just a quick uh, overview of what the API provides you. It's, you know, it's based on HTTP, HTTPS is the overriding one, or the transport it runs across. It's XML based, it's transactional, um, standard request response cycle. Um, if you're interested in working with the APIC, uh, the APIC has taken that same UCS API object model mechanism and made it REST based. So whereas here in the UCS XML API, the request response cycle is I send a request, I might get back a 200 OK. It just means that my request response cycle was OK. It doesn't mean that my operation was complete. It just means that the response cycle was OK. In the APIC, when you get that 200 OK back, it means that your actual operation was OK. So we've kind of taken the UCS XML API and, and um, you know, it grew up. You know, X, UCS XML API may be the awkward teenager and, and um, the APIC API is the elegant adult, perhaps. Um, object model hierarchy, built-in object browser comes with the UCS manager. Who's used Visore? X, the UCS manager Visore? Oh, you guys are missing something huge. Huge, it's there, it's, it's already built in. So let me show you, I'll show you some of that too. So that's one of the things I want to talk about today. Um, High availability out of the box. The API is highly available. Two fabric interconnect setup, highly available. And the event stream. Who's familiar with the event stream? So the fabric, the fabric interconnects. You know, you log into a UCS session, UCS manager session in one place, and then you log someone else logs into it. When you update something, add a VLAN, and it automatically appears in their interface. That's because the event stream is being consumed by that UCS manager. It's an XML stream flowing out of the Fabric Interconnect. So when I start up my UCS manager session, if I was to look at the wire and see what was happening, the very first thing, the very first command that comes out of that UCS manager, or out of the client, is an event subscribe method. And that event subscribe method latches into this uh, UCS manager event stream, and that event stream is updating your interface, it's updating everybody else's interface as who's logged into the UCS manager. So you can subscribe to the event stream with PowerTool. So if you go ahead and do a service profile association, you might, in, in today's, or you might uh, keep querying to see, oh, did it associate, did it associate, did it associate, right? So maybe you put your, um, your, uh, your, your script into sort of a loop, keep to seeing, you know, oh, so association's done, and, and you look at the FSM attributes, and you say, oh, it's all done here. But with the watch commandlet, the watch commandlet actually taps into the event stream, and when you watch the, uh, with the watch commandlet, the UCS event stream, and key in on a specific task, it will notify you when the uh, service profile is associated. It'll notify you when any other long-running uh, event has happened. So the watch commandlet is definitely something that you want to key into. The object model documentation. Has anybody utilized the object model documentation? All right, so you've used it. This is like the Rosetta Stone of UCS XML API. Every single method and class um, SNMP uh, message, syslog message, it's all in the object model. So if you've downloaded the um, emulator, you have all these things at your fingertips. You have the event model, or the, the object model. You have the, um, well, you have a, a, a UCS emulated environment, but you also have Visore that you can look at with the, um, with the UCS manager. And, the, and Visore comes um, standard with all UCS managers. It's built into the Fabric uh, Interconnect. All right. So you understand how the object model works. We have the root, right? And then we have objects underneath it. You have your sys object or your, your, your top of tree object, and then you have all these uh, XML objects underneath it that are related in some method, you know, in some root structure or some tree structure. Um, the manage object, the manage object entity, something like the uh, service profile, it's an LS server object. That service profile object has children objects that represent memory, that uh, memory arrays, and underneath the memory array represents the memory chips. They have the CPU or the board object, and underneath the board object you have processors and memory arrays and adapters, and you have all that sort of physical object representation in these XML objects. And then you also have your logical representations. You have your organizations. You have your service profiles. 
your roles, your privileges. You have that entire infrastructure of, of objects, that entire hierarchy of objects. And the way you get to a managed object is through its uh, distinguished name. Every object in UCS Manager has a distinguished name, and that distinguished name is the unambiguous, unambiguous reference to that object in the UCS environment. No other object will have the distinguished name that that object has, because it's, it's totally unique. So how does that happen? Well, the root object has a relative name. It's the root. The object underneath that has a relative name, and that's the name of that object. And as you go down, each object has a relative name. You, pour, you put all those relative names together, and you end up with the distinguished name. And that distinguished name, something like sys, chassis 5, blade 2, adapter 1, host eth 2. So this is a distinguished name down into the, into the element. So the way power tool works, we work at an object level. If I need to get to host eth 2, I can use the commandlet that pulls, me, that pulls out adapters for me, but I can also go down the chain. I could get a chassis, and when the chassis is returned to me, I could get all the blade objects out of the chassis, and then I could pipeline that to get compute board out of uh, the compute board commandlet, and I can pipeline that to another one. So the hierarchy of the object model is, um, is represented is, I don't know how to say it, it's, it's represented exactly the same way in the power tool commandlet hierarchy. So I just want to give you a little bit of a, a reference between the object model hierarchy and then when you see chaining or pipelining in the power tool environment, how these things fit together. All right, so now the, the part that you came for, the UCS power tool tips and tricks. So the first tip, oh, wait, wait before I get there, I mentioned it earlier that the, uh, that the power tool library is generated from the, uh, from the schema, right? So right now we generate the PowerShell library, we generate the Microsoft SEO integration pack, but then the idea is that we'll generate other things, and we do generate a Python library for UCS Manager. It's in a beta form, but if you go to communities.cisco.com and you go to the UCS section, you can go right to the, um, the, the entries there for the Python library. And UCS Power Tool, UCS Power Tool will generate Python code for you that uses the Python library. So if you're interested in using Python in your, in your environment, it will generate Python code. Now, if you're Python purists, it's not the most Pythonic code, but it is Python code. So, and I'll show you how to generate Python code from UCS Power Tool. What would you use Power Tool for? Everything. You could use it for everything. So just to give you an example, I did a deployment at bank, at a bank. <laughs> Sorry. I did a deployment at a bank. Uh, it was 12 UCS pods. Each pod had 20 chassis. Each chassis had eight blades. Right, so it's almost 2,000 blades. I scripted the entire thing. I had Excel spreadsheets or workbooks, and each workbook had five tabs in it. Right, and each tab represented equipment, servers, network, um, admin, what's the other tab? Uh, SAN, right? I didn't do anything with the VM tab, with um, uh, the, the, the VM fex stuff. I deployed almost 2,000 blades on 12 pods um, using UCS Power Tool and reading information out of those spreadsheets in three days beginning 10, boom, right, all through the API. And I, that code is actually up on one of my blogs. So if you go to blogs.cisco.com and search for John McDonough, it's probably from 20, um, it's probably from 2013, but you can get this power tool script that I wrote that uses XML or uses Excel spreadsheet as the provider of data. And um, I think it's a pretty cool environment or a pretty cool uh, implementation. So you can do everything with UCS power tool. All right. So here's the first trick. Actually, PowerShell. Get help on the UCS commandlet. Who's done this? All right. So you've done it. So you get it. So it's not so much of a trick, but the thing to understand is that's your pipeline object. Typically, the first thing there is your pipeline object. But fair enough, you'll see a get help. And actually, on the syntax, you may see multiple different ways for that call to work, 
right? So on a, on a um, add VLAN, you'll see multiple different ways to get into the LAN cloud, and it, it's all listed there under the get help. Now, the get help itself is a generated help, so it's not always full, you know, uh, as, as much as you'd like it to be, but get help will help you solve some issues. All right. Connecting to multiple UCSs. Who, who's used Power Tool to connect to multiple UCSs at the same time? All right. So there's a methodology that you can have. You can connect to a UCS and store that connection in a variable. And then you can loop through those variables and touch each U UCS along the way. And you would process your operations to those UCSs in a serial manner, because your code would be written serially. It's going to loop through that. However, if you connect to UCS, and before you do it, you use the set UCS power tool configuration, support multiple UCSs or multiple default UCS to true. Now I can have, I can run a connect UCS. It puts that um, default UCS connection into, um, into an array of connections for you. And then when you, op when you send out your operation to the UCS managers, it does it in parallel. So if you want to create a VLAN on, say, 20 UCS managers, and you did it the variableized way, it's going to be you know, 20, a loop of 20 through there, create the VLAN, create the VLAN, create the VLAN. But if you do it this way, where all those connections are the default UCS connection, and you say, add UCS VLAN, it's going to do it in parallel. So your processing time may potentially be cut down, because if you're waiting for operations to complete, in a serial manner, it'll be different than if you wait for that operation to complete in a parallel manner. So set UCS configuration, support multiple default UCS to true, and you're going to be able to do that parallel parallelism. Now, you still will be able to look at the sessions that you have. You won't have them variableized, but you'll still be able to do get the UCS PS session. And you'll see I have two connections here. Now, I don't have a handle to that connection. I don't have a, uh, a variable to that connection. But I do have something about that connection that is unique in my environment. I have either the UCS name or I have the URI. So you know, from a, an object perspective, I can run a command and say, you know, where it's equal to this, do this thing. So even though I have multiple default connections and the, and the connections aren't sort of handled, they don't have a handle to them, I can actually use get PS session, do a match on the name, and then I can, I can selectively decide which UCS managers I want to work with or do that operation on. All right. So get UCS PS session will allow, enable you to see that. Now, the other thing that you can do is export your UCS PS session to a file. And so when you connect to UCS Manager, I can actually go ahead and say connect UCS IP address, right? Put credentials in. Or I can say connect UCS Manager encrypted file, and it can, it'll ask me for an, uh, a password. And I can go ahead and, um, and have that put in there. And now I can make my connections all at once. So look at the connect, do a get help on connect UCS. And you'll see we actually support a, a, a variety of ways to connect to the UCS. We can do it with a list. We can do it with a, um, a, a path to a file. And we can do it with a key. So there's, there's a multiple, multitude of ways. And if again, just to put that out there, if you connect to multiple default UCSs, when you execute your command, like you know, something very you know, generic, get UCS org, it happens in parallel. Now, I'm connecting to um, two emulators running on my laptop, but it's parallelized. Now, the display of it is, is going to come out in some particular order, although the order is not guaranteed. So it did uh, 120. Let's see, org. Oh, those are both on the same one. Sorry. Um, the last time, I think it did 129 first and then, and then 172 second. All right. Was that helpful? Did, did, is that something you guys didn't know before? It was worth coming to the session, that alone? 
All right. All right. Who's used get UCS commandlet meta? All right. So we got one out of the group in here, and, that, and that's great. I'm glad you used it. This is by far the most powerful, helpful command in the Power Tool library. Because this will tell you exactly what the commandlet can do and the, and the structure, the, how it's contained, and the containment hierarchy. So get UCS commandlet meta will take a class ID or it'll take the noun. So the noun is the part of the UCS Power Tool commandlet. So if I say get UCS org, UCS org is the noun. Actually, just org is the noun, but you can say UCS org or, or it'll, it'll automatically prepend UCS onto it if you don't use it. Org org is the class ID for an org, right? So if you looked at the XML itself, you would see org org as the element name in your XML, and then there, there would be attributes. So commandlet metadata, if I say get UCS commandlet meta class ID org org, it tells me the class ID. Well, I already knew the class ID, but it tells me the noun. So if I knew one and I didn't know the other, this is going to tell me what that thing is. But then it's going to tell me all the supported verbs for that commandlet. I get, add, set, and remove. I can get orgs, I can add orgs, I can set orgs, and I can remove orgs. The pipeline class ID and the limit scope pipeline class ID. So these are things that are going to be important in how you pipeline commands together. So whether I use the class ID or the noun, I'm going to be able to understand more about that, that power tool commandlet. Now, well, I think it's on the next slide. Sorry. How do you find out the class ID? Has anybody, do you know how to find out the class? If you don't know the class ID, what do you do? Did you guess it? Did you try to figure it out? You know, whatever. All right. So has anybody done this trick? You right click in the graphical interface. You copy the XML. Has anybody done that? All right. Copy the XML, put it in a notepad. And what's the first thing here? So I clicked on a VLAN. The fabric, ID, fabric VLAN, that's my class ID. Now what they've done in Power Tool, and maybe yes, maybe no, the right thing to do, I'm not sure, but they've taken some of these class IDs and given them friendly names. So service profile, that's friendly, right? You're familiar with service profile from the UCS manager. Do you know that the class ID is LS server? So I, I mean, service profile is also LS server. That's the class ID for service profile. So when you write get UCS service profile, the XML that gets generated on the back end is really going to go and find the object called LS server. So we do have this friendly name to UCS element name. Some of them are exactly the same. Fabric VLAN is actually VLAN, but um, I, I can't think of one off the top. Oh, element, uh, network element. That is the, uh, I believe that's the, uh, the actual class ID for a Fabric Interconnect. Let me see. Get UCS. Commandlet meta. All right. So the first time you run commandlet meta, it takes a few seconds to load the to load the metadata. Um, so it'll it'll run a, a maybe a second or two the first time, but then afterwards it, it'll run a little bit faster. But when you specify the class ID for network element, it'll come up provided there isn't actually called network element, I, I believe there is. Um, it'll show me the operation, so I can do a get and I can do a set. How many things can you set on a network element, right? You can set, um, I think, ports and, and, and other components on the network element. It's the fabric interconnect. So where get UCS service profile is the friendly name for LS server, we didn't think that we had to friendly name the fabric interconnect. I'm not sure why, but that is the fabric interconnect network element. All right. So, is that all that commandlet metadata does, or get commandlet meta? No, here it gets even better, all right. So now, I, I have the class ID. I didn't know the class ID, I right clicked on the object and I, and I got it from the XML in, in, the, in the graphical interface. Or, I kind of searched it out with get commandlet meta. But now I have it, and now I have fabric VLAN 
and I say get UCS commandlet meta class ID fabric VLAN dash tree. And this will show me the containment hierarchy and the contained hierarchy under fabric VLAN. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. First, what's the friendly name? UCS VLAN is the friendly name. And I said that was the noun. And the noun can be VLAN, or it could be UCS VLAN. Right, same thing, get add set. Shows you the pipeline class IDs. And so here's a methodology. I know that different land clouds, whether it's the ETH land or it's the fabric land cloud, whatever it is, I know those different commands will be pipelineable into that object right, or into that commandlet. So let's add tree. This is amazing to me, right? Now I know every object above and below for a fabric VLAN, but not only do I know every object above and below for a fabric VLAN, I know every commandlet name above and below for a fabric VLAN, and I know every action verb available for that, for that object, right? I know about, you know, at the fabric VLAN side, there's all these other ones underneath here, and some of these are going to relate to um, uh, the, the mode of the VLAN. Some of these are going to relate to the ID, that, uh, you know, whatever, the port. But you can see the get, add, set, remove, get, add, set, remove. Some don't have any options available. Some are just, you know, we don't, we don't deal with that object. It may be that it's a system object that you don't have access to, and that's okay, because you may not have to touch it. But get UCS commandlet meta is such a powerful commandlet to have that it's really worthwhile you know, using that as a methodology to figure out the, the hierarchy of the objects you need to work with. Does anybody have any questions so far? I don't want to just keep going in case there was a... Anybody used the dash tree flag before? So sweet. Another thing that you got, come in here. Transactions. Does anybody use transactions in UCS Power Tool? Okay. Normally, normally when I write Power Tool scripts, I don't really rely heavily on transactions because I run my script, I do a specific action, it either works or it doesn't work and it comes back. And so I'm not dependent upon the transaction. And then a while ago, I had this, um, uh, this engagement where I had to create on the, um, on the unified ports, I had to set up which were going to be Ethernet ports and which were going to be um, fabric ports, or um, uh, I can't think of the word, um, fa uh, fiber channel ports, sorry. So what were going to be Ethernet ports and what were going to be fiber channel ports? Through PowerTool, the only way to make that operation work is with a transaction, because it's a two-step process creating, a, uh, creating that, that configuration and you can't create the fiber channel ports and the ethernet ports outside of, uh, outside of a transaction. It's actually a two-step process. And the way I figured that out, because I kept running my power tool commands to, to do that thing and it kept failing, kept failing, kept failing. I brought up Wireshark, I connected to my UCS manager in HTTP mode, right? So I turned off HTTP redirect and then I looked at the traffic and I saw it was an actual transaction going through there. So it was a config, um, uh, um, uh, you know, like a config conf MOs, not a config conf MO. And actually, if you look at the traffic, who is, are you familiar with what config conf MO is? That's the method. If you look at the XML, that's the method that does um, a modification or a configuration in UCS Manager. Well, config conf MO works on a single managed object, MO, one managed object. ConfigConf MOs works on one or more managed objects. And when you put more than one managed object in a ConfigConf MO or ConfigConf MOs, it's automatically a transaction. So that's the only way I was able to figure it out was by looking at the traffic going over the wire with Wireshark. So um, I actually don't talk about Wireshark in here, but on the, um, on the DevNet site, there's a document I wrote about using Wireshark with UCS Manager. And I, and I highly recommend putting, if you're doing development with UCS, looking at the UCS manager traffic that's going back and forth with your, with your stuff. But if you do need to set up a transaction, 
you get your variables. You might get UCS service profile one, put that in a variable. That's the example here. UCS service profile two, put that in a variable. And say you just want to change the description. Now, this is not really a transactionable type of uh, requirement here, but just for example purposes. I start the transaction. I set the description. And when you run this command, you'll actually see the XML on the screen, or excuse me, the, the object on the screen. It'll, re, it'll be regurgitated back to you. But it won't be pushed to the UCS manager yet. It's there. It's like in a buffer waiting to go. You started the transaction. You run those two commands. And it's not until you run complete transaction that the, the big group of XML actually gets pushed over to the UCS manager and engages, right? So you could, you could potentially run this, like you're sitting on a plane, you're going to do something somewhere. You could run all these commands, capture all that XML that would be pushed to the UCS manager. You get to your site and just push it. So you could pre-configure your UCS before you even get there. But anyway, transactions, stage all these things, and then the complete the transaction. Now, the thing about transactions, the thing to remember with UCS Manager is that if one of the things in the transaction fails, so you got 99 of them, or 100, right? If the 100th fails, all other 99 are rolled back. UCS Manager is acid compliant. We either everything works or none of it works. Right? So you have to remember, if you're going to transactionalize something, it's either out of necessity, like setting the Ethernet and fiber channel ports, or you want to transactionalize it. But I wouldn't recommend transactionalizing something that doesn't need to be transactionalized or grouping things together that don't need to be transactionalized. I wouldn't create an organization and associate a service profile in the same transaction. Because if the service profile failed association, then the organization wouldn't get created. Also, you'd be waiting, potentially, um, for things to happen. And if you have pending transactions that you don't want to push through, you can undo UCS transaction. All right. I feel bad about this commandlet, convert to UCS commandlet. Who's used it? All right. I'm taking away, convert to UCS commandlet's taking away some of your programmer cred. Right? I don't mean that in such a negative way, but it's a crutch. We're relying on it. Come on, UCS, tell me how to do this. Convert to UCS command, let's tell me how to do it. But once it starts telling you how to do it, you rely upon it. I don't want you to rely on convert to UCS commandlet. I want you to know how to delve into the, the object hierarchy. I want you to know how to look at the object model documentation. I want you to know how to do this stuff because then convert to UCS commandlet, that's what non-programmers use. Now, I'm not saying that guys who used it. If you use it, that's cool. Don't worry about it. I have no, I don't have a negative opinion of anybody that's used it. But I feel like it's, it's not letting you be the, the guru of UCS power tool that you want to be. But there is something cool about convert to UCS commandlet, so I will give it some, the props that it deserves. So convert to UCS commandlet, what does it do? I start up UCS power tool. I connect to UCS manager. So start a UCS GUI session. I run convert to UCS commandlet. I do something, I do something. I don't query, I actually do something. I create something, delete something, modify something. And the command that pops out. So I added a VLAN and out pop, get UCS LAN cloud, add UCS VLAN, compression type included, default net no, ID 333, MCAS policy name, nothing, name Joe McDonough, that's my user ID, I'm not very creative. Policy owner local. Uh, public uh, network name, nothing, sharing none. So it pumped this stuff out to me. Now some of those variables, some of those flags, I didn't actually need them. UCS command gave me more than I needed. And by, by virtue of that, I might have write a script and said, oh, I gotta know all this stuff, but I don't really need to know all that stuff. So convert to UCS command it's good because it told me what the pipeline is. Before I can add a VLAN, I need to know the LAN cloud. So I gotta get the LAN cloud first, I gotta pump it into, into add UCS VLAN and then I can create my VLAN. But really all I needed, default net no, that's the default setting. This other crap, excuse me, that's probably not the right way to say it, this other junk, um, all I really need is, is the name of the VLAN and the ID. But now that I have this, right, I can parameterize it, right? And so I could write something where I could do, you know, uh, 200, 
dot, dot, 210. You know what that does, right? 200 through 210. I can take that. I can pump that into Get UCS Land Cloud. It gets the Land Cloud. I can pump that into Add UCS VLAN, and I just created 11 VLANs on the fly. Now, if I was connected to two UCS managers, or three or four or whatever, and they were all part of my environment, in parallel, I just created 11 VLANs and all my UCS managers because I understood that snippet. So convert to UCS commandlet is good in that respect, right? You just take the commandlet and put it out and you parameterize it. Yeah, go ahead. He's got why, why wouldn't you have used uh, convert to UCS commandlet for configuring the unified ports? What's that? Why wouldn't you have used this instead of Wireshark uh, to troubleshoot the configuring of the unified ports? The, the reason I used Wireshark because I didn't understand why UCS Power Tool wasn't working. And Power Tool in, this, in that instance for configuring the unified ports wasn't telling me why it wasn't working, right? If you, if you had actually gone into Platform Emulator, created it, you would have seen it. If, right, so what I had to do was I actually had to use Wireshark to see the traffic that was going across the wire to understand that it was a multi-object configuration as a transaction that configured the unified ports. So that was the only methodology I understood how to use, so that's why I used it. But this would have worked. But, but using uh, convert to commandlet would have worked as well, instead of Wireshark. It would have. And, and you would have seen that you needed the transaction to actually create it. It would have, but I was being a... I was an being engineer. a I was being an engineer, right? So I wasn't going to let this thing turn me into a non-engineer. You know what? And you're right. It, it could have, and I and I should have, right? I was being too stubborn. But here's the thing: convert to UCS commandlet. Oh, okay, I have a slide I got to go back to. Convert to UCS commandlet has a flag, a dash Python flag. Has anybody used the dash Python flag on convert to UCS commandlet? All right. So there is a Python library that's in a beta format on communities.cisco.com. If you use convert to UCS commandlet with the Python flag, it will spit out UCS Python library code. So if you want to create Python code, now it spits us out. I created that same VLAN, right? And here's what it pushed out. Handle, get the managed object, get me the fabric LAN. This is the get UCS LAN cloud. I get that into my object. Handle dot add managed object. Add a fabric VLAN to that object, right? Put in my parameters here. Now, of course, it gave me all the junk that I didn't need. I really only needed the name, the ID, and the other stuff was really sort of ancillary filler object, but it created Python code for me to use with the UCS SDK. So are we asking you to say UCS Python SDK for this stuff? Yeah. Could you do it differently? Could you just create your own XML? Um, you could. So how would you do that? Has anybody used the dash XML flag? All right. Th this is the greatest session of the week. Who says? All right. I'm just trying to pump myself up. The UCS commandlet XML flag shows you the request XML and the response XML. So if I don't want to use the Python SDK or if I don't want to use if I want to use Java, if I want to use C sharp, if I want to use some other programming language, right? If I want to use curl, if I just want to like program stuff from the command line in Linux and use curl. Or, um, or in SIGWIN or some other Unix emulator or Linux emulator on my laptop, or use my Mac um, uh, terminal, I could do that. So every single UCS Power Tool commandlet that has to do with operations supports the dash XML flag. Now you can see here, I run get UCS org name finance. Add UCS org name Americas. So I'm getting the organization called Finance, and by default, if you've used UCS Emulator, you know it comes with an organization called Finance. I'm getting the Finance organization, that object I'm putting into the object, because we're pipelining objects. So 
uh, you know, when, when you look at something like Linux and you're, and you're pipelining at the command line, you're typically pipelining text, some sort of text down the command line, right? But with PowerShell, and the reason I think PowerShell is so awesome, it's, it's all object-based, right? So I'm actually taking a UCS object and I'm pipelining it down to another commandlet that takes a UCS object in. And as long as it, it is the pipeline object that you're sending to it, then you don't even have to name that object. So I'm saying get UCS org name finance, and I'm saying add UCS org name Americas dash XML. So this is showing me the XML for the add operation, not for the get operation, but for the add operation. But let's go ahead and, and, and run this one. Now you see the XML here, but uh, we'll go ahead and run it. So I have two UCSs connected to this. It sent these out in parallel. It sent it out to one UCS and another UCS in parallel. It didn't send them out serially. And it's a config resolve class. This is the method. Our XML, or our methods within, use, within the XML API are, are actually XML objects. Config resolve class says for the class ID org org, that's the class ID for an organization. Now I know I'm using very basic um, entities within UCS Manager, but the concept is the same for every entity within UCS Manager. This works exactly the same way, right? So the org, org class ID, config resolve class is show me all the class objects that belong to this class. The cookie, my authentication mechanism, that's the, the, the token that gets generated for me when I log into UCS Manager. And so this has a filter. So we take an XML object, and inside that XML object, we embed the filter. Now, the filter that gets embedded says, for the class org org, where the property is named and the value is equal, see the equal operator, equal to finance, then give me those objects back. Because there's two objects called root. There's root object, and underneath root, this is just in the emulator, there's the finance object. Um, and I'm saying there's two because I'm connected to two UCS managers. So this will, that's the query. So query to one UCS, query to another UCS, right? And we're sending those two off to the UCS manager. Now the first one back is the response to a config resolve class. I know it's a response because it has an attribute called response, response equals yes. So I don't have to, is this a response? It is a response, response equals yes. The out config object, is the object, org, org, description, no description, DN, org, root, org, finance. That's the distinguished name. There's no other distinguished name that is the same as this in the UCS manager. Some other filter stuff, the name is finance, the permission access is yes, and the out configs. If I actually got back more than that, they would also be another object in the out config. So I have an out config for the uh, first one, and I have an out config for the second one. The XML flag is going to tell me the exact request and response to UCS Manager through that UCS Power Tool created, showing me the filters, showing me the, you know, the attributes and their values. This is unfiltered, unadulterated, raw XML coming back from UCS Manager. This stuff right here that came back from UCS Manager Right? That's PowerTool stuff as well as XML attributes. PowerTool adds in the extra property uh, map and it also adds in this UCS one. It also adds in the, um, the status, which you don't see in here. So PowerTool adds some stuff to this, which is kind of neat because then I can say, when I'm connected to multiple UCSs, get UCS manager named finance or whatever, and I could say, well, don't pipe it too close, select UCS, comma, name, and now I have this. I have these organization names on there, but maybe I don't know where finance is. It might be at a deeper level, so then let's also throw in there the DN, all right? So UCS Power Tool um, has that XML flag, but then I just wanted to show you how it, it pipelined into that. Now, if I wanted to see an add command, remember we talked about the, the get config uh, conf MOs. So let's say add UCS org. 
dash name, Americas, right? Americas, America, all right? Dash XML. Now I could put it at the get and I'd see the XML for that, but we already saw that. I want to see this one, right? So a couple of things happen here, right? The request goes across a config conf MO. The config conf MO is the XML call or the XML method says I want to configure a managed object in UCS uh, manager and that if I have more than one, it's automatically a transaction, right? But even though config conf MOs uh, works with one object, right, um, or more, you'll, I don't think you'll ever see, if you look at the wire, you'll never see a place where we use config conf MO by itself. Config conf MO is kind of superfluous because config conf MOs works on one or more, and unless there's more than one object, we don't actually create a transaction. So you'll see that we have this pair key in here, and this is kind of the transactional-based methodology. There would be another pair key for the next object. There'd be another pair key for the next object. But whatever the case, config conf MO, the pair key, and then the object we want to create, sorry, it's an org org, the DN that we're going to create it in, oh, this is the worst thing, um, org root org, finance, and then underneath finance, org Americas, name America, and the status created. Config conf MOs is a method that creates objects or it modifies objects, so sometimes you'll see a status that is created to create that object. Sometimes you'll see a status that is created, comma, modified. There's so much information in that XML, it's really worth looking at the wire to see what, um, what's in there for you. So once an object is created in UCS Manager, and using this XML flag, flag, we regurgitate back to you, our power tool will regurgitate back to you the current status of that object as it exists at that moment in time. So if you're looking at something that's very, like a logical entity that gets created and isn't in some sort of finite state machine cycle, you'll get that state back or that object back. It'll be displayed back to you. And that's the state of the object. But if you do a service profile association, it's going to immediately spit back to you um, the, the XML for, or the object information for that, but it may be in some sort of finite state machine. That's what I'm saying using the watch UCS commandlet, you can actually tap into the uh, event stream, and then you can put some filters in there that says when this thing happens, when this service profile is in a fully associated state, when the state changes to associated, then I know my operation is done, and I no longer have to cycle and query and ask for the UCS manager, are you associated? Are you associated? Are you associated? You know, so you'll get back some state information for that thing that you just did, for the entity that you just created, or for the action that you wanted to have happen, like the application of a service profile, and we'll, you'll get back the state at that point in time. So just so you're aware, even though the service profile association command will spit back to you that it's associated or it's in association state, uh, it may not mean that it's actually associated yet because it's a long running process. So the XML flag, put it into your repertoire. Who's gonna use the XML flag now? Everybody. <laughs> All right, who's gonna use the Python flag? Who's gonna write some Python code? All right. Um, Who's going to use less convert to UCS commandlet? You can keep using it. Don't worry. It's fine. All right. Power tool parameter validations. So two things come into play here. The object model documentation. I can go to the object model documentation. I can look up what the, what the actual values can be for something. So let's take a look at that. If you've downloaded the emulator, And you have this side stuff over here. You have the manage, UCS Manager Home, you have the object browser, you have the API model documentation. Rosetta Stone, remember I told you this thing is, some, this is something you want to know, right? So find the class. Let's find org org, because I've been working with orgs, right? It's all the way down here. And there's 9,000 classes, so get ready. All right. Org. Come on, org, org. 
org, org. All right. For some reason, this object model documentation has a, has a colon between the first component and the second component of the thing. Just from, from an object element ID, it's just, it's without the colon. So org, org, just so I show you how to read this. Org, org is a concrete object. This is the end state object. You can see the naming rules for it. You can see the SNMP OID for it. You can see who can manage it. Admins and org um, management, that role, that's the role that can manage it, or the privilege, excuse me. So if you create a role in UCS Manager and you want to make, somebody, make sure somebody can manage roles, they have to have that privilege, right? You got the OID, you got some information here. Who can manage it? Sometimes you'll see that the um, the privilege is implicit. You'll see the word implicit. That means you have no access. Only the system manages that object. But anyway, so here's the, there, here's the uh, hierarchy. Now, I can go and look at the containment, what it contains, who, or who contains it, top root contains orgs, the contained hierarchy, what, what can be con underneath org. And it's huge, because everything can be underneath org. Oh my gosh, it's tremendous what can be underneath here, right? So let's go back up here, all right? And I actually want to look at the property summary. So org has a couple of properties. It has a description, it has a level, it has a name, it has a permission access, right? And I can look at the property detail. Now here's the thing. The property detail for a description. I have programmatic information here. I have a regular expression. So if I front end my, my UCS management or my UCS manager um, configuration, I now know that if I want to create an org, an org name can be a minimum of zero characters, can't be, it's actually one, and up to 256. But there's a regular expression for supported UCS manager organization names. So I have this regular expression and I can, in my program, if somebody puts an organization out to there that they want to create a UCS manager, I can just try to match it against that regular expression. If it doesn't match, it doesn't go. I don't have to figure it out anymore. This object model documentation has it there for me. The other thing I have in the object model documentation is the level. The levels that are supported, the number of levels that we can go for, for an organization is six levels. We have the root level and then five underneath it. So we have this five levels underneath, right? So we have five levels of organization. But maybe I don't want to go here every time that I want to create a UCS manager organization. So here's the deal. All right. Add UCS org. Level. Level. Sorry. Level. Level. OK. I don't know what the levels are, right? So let me just put in some bogus information. Level junk. UCS manager comes, or the power tool comes back and says, junk does not belong to the set one, two, three, four, five root. UCS power tool can tell me what the valid example or what the valid parameters or values for that parameter are. So any place you might be wondering, oh, what, what can go here, put in something bogus, like the word junk or like, you know, I don't know, a, a crazy number, but it'll tell you what goes into that space. So you can look at the object model documentation. You can use this methodology, putting some bogus information in, and it'll come back and tell you what it doesn't belong to. Now, what would be really cool is if you could, let's see. Um, get the regular expression back, and you can. You can get the regular expression back. So I put in something that I know is invalid, like uh, percent signs or, 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 or asterisks, and I can do that. So getting this information back, I think is pretty cool. So parameter validation type of stuff. And I think, oh, I talked about parallelism. Parallelism, object manager version. So I, I didn't really get the, we were kind of running out of time here, but there's two other commandlets that I want to tell you about. Sync managed object and compare managed object, right? Look up my blog on blogs at sister.com. Look up John McDonough. I have a whole blog on syncing and comparing. So you can take a, a UCS manager as your master, like your gold UCS manager, and if you want to compare all your other UCS managers to it, things that should be in sync with it, 
same VLANs, same uh, you know, users, uh, roles, privileges. Use compare and sync, and you can literally take what's at this UCS manager and sync it to this UCS manager, or you could do bi-directional, really. Compare and sync, you want, to, you want to get to know them. And I think that was it. Last thing, the My Favorite Speaker Contest. I'm at John A. McDonough. I am your favorite speaker. I am your favorite speaker. I don't know, is that that's Star Wars, right? <laughs> um, but fill out your, your evaluations. If you're not going to give me fives, don't bother. I don't want it. I don't want to know what I didn't do right. I just want a five. Um, no, fill it out. Be honest, because I'll, 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 I'll grow from the feedback. I'll be sad if I don't get a five, but I'll grow. Um, and, and use the DevNet Labs and, and uh, check into stuff. And, uh, and thanks so much for coming.